What's so special about Icon of the Seas? Let's discuss. Welcome to Princess and Scoundrel, where we take you along our scrappily ever after, from fantasy land to tattooing and everything in between. I'm Sarah. And I'm Steven. And I got to go on the inaugural sailing of the world's largest cruise ship. Now, One of us got to go on. Now tell me, should I be jealous? <laughs> Ugh, so <laughs> we'll get to that. Okay. okay? okay. Um, but yeah, I was super fortunate. I got to go on the inaugural sailing. It was not one of these like, hey, princess and scoundrel come out. Like I was, somebody had booked into a cabin for, with our travel agency and I got to jump in on that. So I had, I paid, trust me, I paid. Um, but it was such a cool experience to be one of the first on the biggest cruise ship in the world. Well, I think, so the thing is, like you said, that when the inaugural cruise is, when you're able to book something like this, it's, or even cruises in general, it's like a year, right? Or or more. Plus, yeah. So they started booking this back in It was October of twenty twenty two. Yeah. So we had we were like baby novices to cruising. We'd we, only cruise in space at that point. Right. Yeah. So <laughs> um it was it was funny when when uh, the agency kind of came to you and said, Hey, here's this room and this cruise, whatever. Do you wanna go? And um uh, you were kind of like, I don't know, I don't know, because I wasn't going to go with you. And I was like, just go. Yeah. Like, go try it out. Go see what it's about. Because, again, you could you could come back and tell us. I can come and I, tell you. And I could you. just, you know, sit here and, oh, okay, okay, yeah, yeah. No, I don't like that. Or, yes, I do like that. Right. So you got to sell it to me. Just, me like, to... just like the last cruise, you got to sell this to me. Is this a sales presentation? Yeah. <laughs> Good thing I brought a pitch deck. <laughs> I'm just kidding. <laughs> okay, so let's let's get into it a bit so yes um super fortunate my agency i need to plug them carry on the magic absolutely amazing that they were able to secure a cabin on the inaugural sailing i was able to go and there's some prep with any cruise that you do one of the great things about cruises is that you don't have to do too much preparation but there's a few things that you may want to do to make your cruise more enjoyable right so first thing up is dining if you are like a super big foodie and you're into more of a specialty dining situation, maybe a nice steakhouse or maybe seafood or on Icon of the Seas, they had this thing called Empire Supper Club and it was like $200. Anyway, it was like this beautiful like multi-course meal. They paired it with cocktails. It was like an exper a dining experience. Um, those are things that you would book ahead of time. If you just want to eat like in the main dining hall, you can just reserve your time ahead of time and you're good. There is entertainment. So like booking shows. So they've got nighttime entertainment on Icon of the Seas. They had like a Broadway show, an ice skating show, and a water show. Those, if you wanted to do that, you had to go in and like select your times um, because those will fill up ahead of time too. And then there's things like add-ons. So if you want to get a spa package or like a pass to go visit the spa and do the saunas and all of that stuff, you can do that. I didn't do that. That's not my vibes. <laughs> I opted instead for the drink package <laughs> and the internet package. Okay, okay. Those more my speed. Um, and the drink package, they have different ones. So it's you. It's not all non-alcoholic drinks are just included in the price of the cruise. Like if you want to drink sodas and specialty coffees and those types of things, you'd have to get a drink package for that, uh, which is what we had initially. And then like two weeks before the cruise, they ran a sale for the alcoholic drink package. And I was like, well, that's not that much more. Now, do you have to book this ahead of time or can you do a drink package while you're on the ship? I think you can just like buy the drink package. on. They're going to sell you anything okay. at any time. But it, you, does it change like prices or anything? So it's it's kind of variable. So like with the... If, if they're trying to sell it, then you're probably going to be able to find a... A discount on it. You're probably going to find a discount on it. If you decide halfway through that you want to upgrade to a drink package, you're not paying for the full seven nights. You're paying for like the four nights that you've got left or even um, the Wi-Fi package. So I had the Wi-Fi for one device, but you could have up to four devices, but you had to pay more for each one for each one. So but none of this is like special to like the pre 
pre-boarding. Uh, no. Okay. No. So it's just that's just how it goes with Royal Caribbean. But yeah, so there's a few things that you can do ahead of time thankfully because i was booked in with travel agents i didn't have to do too much of the pre-planning i was that, just like that, that's kind of how it is at uh at the house i i just did get to enjoy you know the spoils of you planning everything and just telling <laughs> us where to go what to do it was um i felt pampered i was like <laughs> i landed the night before i was like what hotel are we staying at again <laughs> can you send me an address like where are we going now and, like it was wonderful to have everything uh, yeah planned I, like i get it tell now. me about it it was wonderful <laughs> um but that was most of the the prep work it wasn't I, I bought new clothes i had an excuse to buy new outfits so that was fun but that's not anything like specific to the inaugural sailing there was a uh i posted it i think right before mosh it, somebody had like you know done a reel about it but basically like why are we buying new clothes for people that we've never met before like like, <laughs> like you always buy on... clothes for new on like vacation yeah so like but they haven't seen our old clothes before <laughs> <laughs> so why do we why are we dressing nice from that's a good point but it feels good it feels good you feel good wearing new clothes yeah. and like on a cruise i didn't know i also didn't know like the vibes of the cruise i didn't know if it was gonna be cold on the ship if it was gonna be hot like oh that that is one thing because there was like uh, and I guess we'll talk about it later, but there's like white night, like, you know, white yeah, out nights, themed the nights. Themed night. So if you're, you have to plan to, you kind of have to plan that, bring that type of clothes, clothing. Cause yeah. you, don't, you don't always. Cause again, I let somebody else be my travel agent for this one. And so I didn't get into like the details of some of it. There was a themed night that I just like completely missed. Cause I was like, well, mm, mm, I didn't pack anything for that. My bad. <laughs> The inaugural sailing, right? Like there's there's one inaugural sailing. And so they did a few things that were special for that. Although I don't think it was technically just for the inaugural. But when we first boarded the ship. Well, when you say that, I immediately, immediately think it's like the the media one and then like the friends and family one. Yeah. And then this is the one where they came out to the left. And this is the other one where they you know, broke the bottle on. It was just like every type of first inaugural cruise. Right. It's this like is the first one in baby's first January. Sneeze, <laughs> yeah. Baby's first diaper. Yeah, that's what it felt like. But um, but for this one, so when you walk in into the ship, they had all these nets of like balloons. And so we're like, oh man, we're going to do a balloon drop at some point. Like super cool. They had done it for like the two preview cruises that they had like the week before. As we were leaving, we saw more balloons were already up. So we're like, okay, it wasn't just for the inaugural. <laughs> <laughs> You're not special. We're not that special. But on the first night of the sailing, they did a balloon drop. Um, so the the Royal Promenade, which I kept calling the atrium because I'm just like, I'm in my Star Cruiser lingo. But it's this huge. It's a promenade, a huge, like a mall. It was massive in there. Uh, and you could fit a ton of people. But it was nice because it wasn't like a... A ballroom there's like shops and dining and bars and everything off of it but that was where mostly people would gather for these like parties or events like a balloon drop um but at some point in the night they they had like a little countdown and they played some music live music and everybody was dancing and then they dropped the balloons super dope for like 10 seconds <laughs> just imagine it had to have been five ten thousand balloons because this place is massive and there was like probably six of these massive nets. They drop the balloons. Everybody's like, yeah. And they're like kind of popping the balloons back up. Keep, keep you uppy until they start popping. Imagine a giant corridor full of people and it's just balloon popping sounds for like a <laughs> solid five minutes. Like it went from like pure joy to just like instant panic of like, get me out. I was in the middle of it too. Cause like, Anyway, I tried to start a dance party in the middle of the thing, and I did. But I'm in the middle of the crowd, and I was, and then all of a sudden the balloons are popping. I was like, "No, get me out of here!" <laughs> <laughs> I was like, "Please get me out of here!" It was, but everybody felt like that. We were all like, "Yeah, no." <laughs> so they did the balloon drop. Um, they did do fireworks for the inaugural sailing at the port of Miami. I thought they were gonna do them off the cruise ship, but they did them. I think on land because we actually we were sitting down to dinner when they did them oh, okay. and so we saw them out the window oh, that's kind of cool yeah, it was kind of i mean we were just kind of there were no disney fireworks it was kind of like uh. and we were like cool <laughs> <laughs> but 
but fireworks are fireworks. It was fun. Yeah. Um, and then they did, what else did they do? They did, um, oh, gifts. We got gifts every day in our cabin. But doesn't that happen like if you are like different levels of, you know, the cruise? Because don't they have like your silver, gold, and right. diamond? And, Pinnacle Club, yeah. like Pinnacle Club, like the fancy ones. Uh, I'm just, I wouldn't know. <laughs> We're yeah. new to cruising. But yes, if you do, if you're booked into, like if you have any kind of affiliation or loyalty to them, they give you like a special lanyard or if you're Pinnacle Club, you have a gold name tag. They'll give you things. But I remember that's what you were saying that you saw. All the Pinnacle Club members. Have well, because that was the thing is like they open the bookings up to. They the, get first the dibs. And so there were so many people with that have been on like so many Royal Caribbean cruises. Um, it was a very interesting mix on, on the inaugural voyage, but it was like, it was just, it was cool to see everybody. And like some people had matching shirts. Some people were like trying to get content. I'm trying to run around like, I don't know what I'm doing, but I'm here for a good time and I'm trying to film and like, I don't know what's going on, but the, the mix of people on the cruise was cool. Cause everybody's just excited because yeah. it's an inaugural voyage, but yeah, they gave us gifts every night, um, or every day in our cabin. So water bottles, hats, um, a really cool, like cocktail kit um yeah you're oddly happy about that cocktail kit it was really nice because okay so it, look, okay I, I will explain it like i'm gonna step in right here i'm gonna explain it why i think it's odd because it is like a leather pouch it's a canvas like a like a picnic uh it, it reminds me of like one of those like uh burglar tool like, like, <laughs> yes. where it like rolls out and it's so it's just burglar tool it's a lock pick <laughs> it's bigger though it's not like lock pick size it has like it's massive a mixer and and all the big spoons and it has the a tongs full cocktail shaker yeah. in there so it it's it's neat but you're not going to be carrying around okay the neat. day before i got a notebook <laughs> and so to come into the room and there's this like cool like it's when you think of like, you know, free gifts and the, and the promo swag. items and swag and stuff like that, it's like a hat, a notebook, it, whatever. It is different. It, it, it's not a hat or a notebook. Yeah. So, okay, I give it to you there. It was it was a gift. It was a true gift. <laughs> <laughs> oh, but yeah, so we got something cool like every night like that. By the last night, they gave us a picture of the ship. <laughs> <laughs> okay, because I'm like, oh, we gave all the good stuff already <laughs> now. <laughs> we. <laughs> but it was gifts from like different heads of different departments so like department of marketing the cruise director the cat like the captain gave us the picture of the ship and like but it was neat it w felt was he in the picture too <laughs> no like this <laughs> thumbs um, up but it, it felt special and so you would see people wearing oh and they gave us like weird um like waterproof fanny packs that said icon of the seas on them so you could take them onto your excursions or whatever but it was fun because you would see them people wearing those or you, they wear the hats or whatever um but yeah, so that was that was something fun for the inaugural. Now, one of the things that I was concerned about going on this cruise initially is like the world's largest cruise ship. What comes with being the world's lar largest cruise ship? People. <laughs> <laughs> well, I think this is one of the reasons why I was like, go for it. Like you, you are okay to go by yourself because I was not prepared to like go into such just the size of it itself just looking at pictures i was like it was daunting and i was like that means people that means people and there's people to support those people so there's over two thousand crew members on this ship take that in over two thousand people working on the ship to take care of the guests on the ship that's all two thousand people so that's the size of like a, a cruise ship cap, like max capacity. So I wonder how many, like what's the total number of people that can be on the ship? So for guests, I believe it's 7,600 at max capacity. Ours was not quite, ours was just short of 5,000 guests. So what would you say? Like It was like 65% capacity. And that was something that shocked me. I didn't realize that until we were on the ship that it was not going to be because it the cruise was sold out. What happened is Royal Caribbean decided I'm we're only going to sell 
this many rooms because we're still trying to figure things out here. <laughs> and so they didn't open up all of the cabins. So this, you know, we had, once you had found that information out, yeah. Th this like was immediate, like the, the business brain kicked in and I was like, it's smart because they know that most of the people that are on this, this inaugural cruise. Yeah is going to be reporting about it like you hmm. uh but they're going to want you to have the best possible time ever right yeah because i know there was a lot of times that you were telling me like oh it was like five minute wait it was you know yeah. it wasn't uh, there was no wait at all or like we're sitting in in the dining room and there's nobody around nobody around i was there for two days living in bliss of like this is the world's largest cruise ship and there's no weights. This is amazing. And then I found out it was like 65% capacity. I'm like, oh, well, that makes a lot more sense. <laughs> because, and honestly, like, it was great. I paid for the cruise. I thought it was going to be sold out and it was only at 65%. But I felt a little bit like, oh, wait. Like, I one of the reasons I was coming here was to see how crowded it could be yeah. at 90, 100% capacity. So that I could share what that's like for people that maybe are nervous about going on a massive cruise ship yeah. that can hold 7,600 guests. So from that sense, I was kind of like, mm, I was a little irked by it, but I also got to reap the benefits of it. Yeah. But I, I think one of the things too, kind of like um, you, you have to like think about the staffing. Like, did they have full staffing? Because you know you they have a max. Is that is two thousand the max, or is that like the minimum, the bare bones? Like, what is that like? Yeah. Yeah. Uh, you know, as far as are they ever gonna fill all the rooms one hundred percent? Like, typically places don't. They'll have extra rooms just in case people need to be moved or some <laughs> some kind of issues, and right. they have like this contingency for that. So, right. Sixty five percent may be sold out always. Right. So it could be. And I, then maybe the other thing is, is like there's this were all adults. So the the people were or did they it was it rooms or was it people? Um. So the max the capacity on like the guests on the ship was just short of five thousand So people. But there were only so many rooms that they sold. So they I don't I think they maxed out on the rooms they were willing to sell, not necessarily the amount of people. See, because that's another consideration. Right. It's like it could be where it's one room. Sometimes it's just one person. Exactly. Or sometimes it's a room to the capacity of. Yeah, of four whatever. people yeah. in there. Yeah, exactly. Uh, that was another thing the, you mentioning that on the inaugural voyage. Possibly because and I, now that I'm thinking about it, because Pinnacle Club members, like the ones that have the highest status on Royal Caribbean, got to book first. And then because there's a lot of people that were going on this to report on it or record it for some, for whatever purposes, there wasn't a lot of kids on the ship. And from what I learned on this, Royal Caribbean is very incredibly family friendly. They have a whole, they call them neighborhoods. They have an entire neighborhood. And I listened to it all day and all night because that's where my room was. Dedicated to families. But there wasn't that many kids. There. Every time I would look down there and every it, time it, I was down there, I was like, it's probably it's probably because it was the first first ones, and yeah. then right now it's like still school time in most places. So right, but I was shocked. I was shocked that there wasn't that many kids there. Um, but yeah, I mean, those were the things that were kind of special about the inaugural voyage. I can get into some of the things that didn't quite work with the inaugural voyage. So let's hear. Let's let's have some little tea. So. The very first night that we were on the ship, we had reservations for the water show in the Aqua Dome. I believe it was called Aqua Action. And it's a really cool theater space. It's kind of a theater in the round where everybody sits around the stage and it's kind of like a semicircle. But weirdly enough, because it was in the Aqua Dome, it's this massive space where people can hang out like on the backside of the stage and look out the front of the ship there's like bars there's restaurants there so it's not a closed off theater you can walk around it at any given time i'm going to come and back you need to, a booking for it you need a booking for it if you want to i guess sit down if you want to sit down in the seating they have people at the top of the the seating checking your things 
but I'll, I'll circle back to that because that's why I'm, I'm mentioning this, but it was the very first night. I think we were at the very first showing of it and we sit down. It's supposed to be like diving and you can see that there's like bungees and there's like aerial, you know, artists and everything. We sit down to watch it and the first five minutes of the show is just like water fountains going off in water and some projections. And I was like, something's not right. This seems weird. Um, but then they started the show and then they played the Imperial March. And I was like, oh, my God, it's Star Wars Days at Sea. <laughs> <laughs> and I forgot about it for a little bit. The show is great. Um, the pool itself was neat because it would like the the bottom of the pool would raise and lower. So it would lower deep enough that people could high dive into the water and then it would raise so that they were standing oh, in no. the on the water. It was crazy and they had like they they did a great job with the show anyway because we were on the we watched the very first one the next day we were uh cheryl my sister-in-law the my agency owner we were hanging out in what's called the overlook so basically the back side of this theater looks out at the front of the ship and it's got lots of seating you can hang out we're there and we keep hearing the music that we heard that we listened to for the first five minutes of the show and as we're leaving we go watch they're practicing what was supposed to be happening during that first five minutes. And I was like, oh man, that looked really cool though. Like we didn't get to see it. So it was like the it. part that you missed was. So, so like, yeah, there was parts of the show that they didn't, they weren't ready. Yeah. But the problem with that is because it's an open theater and you can go behind the theater and sit, or you can go to that bar, you can eat at that restaurant. There's no way to close off that space for rehearsals. That's the only place on the <laughs> ship where they can rehearse this thing. And I probably went to the overlook, the front of the ship almost every day. I heard and watched them rehearse that almost every day of the cruise. I don't think the entire sailing, I don't think anybody got to see those first five minutes of the show because we also came back. We oh, came okay. back like three or four nights later and we're like, let's, let's see, see because we happened to be over there. We're like, let's see. And so we waited. And because we didn't have reservations, we just kind of like stood up at the top of the seating and we waited. And you can and still we watch wait. it. We watched, the whole, we, could, we watched the whole first five minutes. And I was like, I mean, I no. guess it's your, your, blocking your seat so basically so for that one you reservations recommended if you want to sit but not necessary um that same the first night of the thing they also had wizard of oz which was the first time that special tie con of the seas the first sh showing of it they didn't show it oh wow yeah so it wasn't ready uh we got to watch it we actually watched it on the last night it was a great show but it just like it wasn't ready and so there's just like little things like that where it was but just yeah I, I think that's kind of you know you were able to watch it on the last day it, it's just those hiccups of yeah uh it, not everything's working on the first day type of thing so yeah i don't think that should be necessarily a a ding against them it's, it's not a ding but i think it's something to consider if you're you're really excited about going on the first of <sighs> any kind well, I, of experience that, and i say that because as an early adopter of like technology there's like these grand things that this new piece of technology comes out, but there's going to be hiccups and yeah, there's going to be naysayers. I'm like, Oh, we'll see. It didn't, it didn't come out perfect. You're like, but this is changing the game, you know, altogether. Yeah. You know, something may not work. Hopefully the company comes and fixes it, but you know, this is 10 steps ahead of what we had before. What you had before. So, right. Or like, so I'm, I'm going to, I'm going to pause. Like, like I'm going to give it, let them yeah, cook yeah. for a little bit. Let them cook, as the kids say. <laughs> but like Galaxy's Edge, Rise of the Resistance was supposed to open with Galaxy's Edge. It didn't open for a few months later, right? Because yeah. it still was having issues. It still <laughs> has issues from time to time. So it was just some of those things where it was just like, oh, this is not quite ready yet. So keep that in mind if you're doing something new. Uh, but th those were really the, the pluses and the minuses of being on the inaugural sailing the cruise like let's get into the cruise itself because it, it was seven nights yeah. <laughs> it was a long time well i mean the going from the last one being three day you know i think it was what three day cruise. we did a three night sailing on the disney wish which was the only other cruise we've ever done yeah so and if weirdly that cruise felt long and short right so to go from that to go to a seven night sailing and to not be with you and the kids was like, it was very stressy going into it. Um, but it's the world's largest 
cruise ship. I'm going to say that phrase, start a drinking game. <laughs> um, there's so much to do on the ship. Like I got antsy at times, but it was my like antsy in the sense of that like, you wanted to do more or you wanted to do less. I wanted to do not things on the ship. I wanted to go to Target if I wanted to. I wanted to like get in my car and drive if I wanted to or like see you guys. Like I'd like to not be on this ship right now. Like just for a moment. Like it cruising is I truly, truly loved this cruise. Like it was amazing. But circumstances being what they were, like I wasn't with you and the kids. Like I didn't have my people with me. Absolutely love Cheryl, my sister-in-law that I traveled with. But it was just kind of like conditions were not the best and then also being new to cruising i'm like seven nights is a long night to be on a cruise <laughs> but by the end of it i was like well i'm really sad to leave this ship i really loved this uh but there's so 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 much to do even if sitting by the pool is not your thing because or being in the pool and i never once got in a pool on the ship so do they have like enough pools or is it like there's one huge pool that everybody has to kind of go to because um, I know that was like something on the wish is like they have smaller pools, but there's a lot. Yeah. But it, you know, is this a, kind of the opposite? We're like, OK, there's like three big pools that everybody has to go to. Yes and no. They had smaller pools um, and really cool, cool pools. So they had one that was a suspended pool off of the back of the ship that was pretty neat. Um, and so it wasn't quite an infinity edge, but the back edge of it was glass. So looked like you're looking off the back of the ship um they have adult only area with a pool there they have lots of little hot tubs around they have another one like in the middle of the ship so they have pools and the crazy thing they had so many pool chairs because that's always like a thing you hear right yeah. like don't hog the pool chairs uh, there was never a time that i was walking around that i was like where could I sit if I wanted to? Oh, there was plenty. Of, yeah, that's that's good. That was really good. And the, the interesting thing was, is like, with the pools in general, we had early dining. If we went out after early, like after our dinner was over, say 7 p.m., the pools were completely empty. Like, we could have an entire pool to ourselves if we wanted. That's pretty nice. Which was strange, I guess, because nobody wants to be in the pool when it's dinner time, right? You got to wait an hour. <laughs> <laughs> you, got into, you got in too early. Got in too early. But yeah, I didn't get in any pools just because like, I don't know, public pools are not like my thing. But the one thing I did do is they have an entire, they call it Thrill Island, an entire water park at sea on This is the on ship. a ship. It's an island, quote unquote, island. Thrill, on, yeah, it's that's just what they call like the little water park area. But they have six water slides and like like i said public pools not my thing but i was like i'm here i've got to do it I'm, I'm, i've got to do it so we go on the first couple and they're like raft ones so my sister-in-law and i were able to go together it's fun they like their water slides but they were great there's the next one where it was like okay you're leveling up now right now you've got to cross your arms and your legs and you got to go down the slide well the first one i go on i think was the scariest one and you as you're entering the slide getting like going down the slide it's almost like a complete 90 degree is that 90 degrees it's a straight drop down yeah so you're having to scoot your butt and your legs are straight out in front of you and then you just like drop down and it just shoots you out to the bottom and i was like that was terrifying but i did it i'm a big brave girl so then we go over to the other side where the other three uh water slides were two of them were out of commission they're like dueling dragons type of like a race oh, see, that would be cool that would have been cool right but they were out of commission when we were, were there we're like oh no there's one more and it's the same one you cross your arms and your legs and i was like okay cool i get all the way up there all the way up there you got to climb a ton of stairs to get up to the top of this thing you're way up in the world because this the whole ship is like it's like 20 i think i'm like on deck 20 at this point by the time wow. i climbed up there i get up there I'm chatting everybody in line around me it's, speaking of which the lines are only like 10 15 minutes long never yeah that, i remember waited. you saying that yeah either. hardly waited for anything it was great i finally turn around to look as the person in front of me is going you're standing they put you in a tube and they close it and they drop the floor out from under you and i was like <laughs> no i was like what did i get myself into i could have easily walked down the stairs and not done it but i was like you know what it's like i did it i, I did the other one i was scared and i did it and then it's my turn and i have to go in this tube 
And they're like, they're explaining to me, they're like, cross your arms and your legs. I was like, is that so I can slide right into my coffin? <laughs> <laughs> but they were nice and they, they, you talk to you over the, the mic when you're in the, the tube. And that was terrifying. Like, that was so scary because you. But was it actually scary or is it just, it was, you were scared to do it? One, I was not anticipating it. And so I think it was just kind of like a panic of like, okay. oh my God. So it's not like a scare. It's just, it was fun. It's a tube, right? Okay. It was fun. But also just the nature of those. I think like they have to pump so much water in that you feel like you're underwater for like a good five seconds before you get your bearings and you're like, okay, wait, no, I'm still in the slide and I'm going around. <laughs> and then they dunk you into the little end of the thing and you get all underwater again and get so, but it was great. The, the water parks there, super, super fun. Like highly recommend it. They've got, um like a putt putt like they have this whole thrill island they have the it's called crown's edge or i think it's called crown's edge where it's like a little zip line thing that takes you over yeah, the edge I remember seeing that. that's a paid thing you do that extra that's in thrill island they've got a rock climbing wall they've got the water park they've got putt putt they have this whole side of it that's thrills now i remember you saying that the the one that goes over the edge that was one of those things you had to book ahead of time because the first couple of days it was uh, like booked sold. up. Yeah. It was sold out or whatever. Yeah. So you had to book it ahead of time. And I thought they said it was sold out and it was like $80 to do that. Once I saw it, I was like, I was watching people do it. The whole thing takes like four minutes to do. Maybe that's because you're going slow. Like if you were just like walking a normal pace, it would take you like 30 seconds to do it. But it was not a very big course. It's very tiny. And I'm sitting there and I'm like, 80 bucks is a lot. I was like, I, I would not spend $80 on that. Well, by the end of the cruise, it was $40 to do it. <laughs> so I think they saw, we were guinea pigs in a sense. Yeah. And so I think they saw like the demand wasn't there once people saw it with their own eyes and they dropped the prices on it. So I was going to do it, but then just. I was, but I didn't. But I didn't. <laughs> I was like, even $40, like I'm okay. It looked cool, but. I'm okay. I did the water slides, man. Yeah. Like I'm set. Um, but yeah, so Thrill Island, it's up on like the upper decks of this ship. And then underneath that, it's called Surfside. And that's the family section of the ship. So think of the ship divided into two halves. The back half is the thrill side and the louder side. And then the front half was the quieter side. So Thrill Island up top underneath it is Surfside. It's this whole neighborhood, as they call it, where Families with like young kids can just stay out there all day. They've got little water parks. They have pools. They've got splash pads. They've got um, like a little like a play gym. They've got quick service dining. They have sit down dining. They have a bar for parents. They have oh, a didn't they have like a a mommy and me type of yeah. bar? It's called I think it's called the Lemon Post. Um, it's like a mommy and me, so you can order Definitely. like like you. They have adult cocktails, and then they have like matching like mocktails for kids which is just like a <laughs> it's cute in theory but it's weird also in theory and in execution <laughs> just like belly up to the bar with mommy but <laughs> but the bar itself was cute um and then they have like soft serve of course because soft serve is just like a huge thing on cruises um they have a gift shop so you really could stay there all day because they've you've got your food you have your entertainment you have your pools like you have everything you need if you're a young kid yeah. or a family with young kids there then they have the more quiet side so up on the pool deck is called chill island and that's where the normal pool is that's where they have a lot more of the pool chairs the the vibes are a lot quieter like the music's not as loud like it was just more of a normal like pool deck. Um, that's again the front of the ship, so that's where like the Aquadome was, where they had the water theater, and you could like out look over the front of the ship. And then underneath that, because it's all open in the middle, is Central Park, which is not a new concept to Royal Caribbean ships, but it's kind of like you're walking like there's greenery, there's full grown trees so on this cruise ship. I, I'm trying to think of like the pictures that I saw. Is that the one that kind of looks it looks kind of like a mall where there's just uh, stuff in the middle and then stores all all around it. Yeah, so it it looks really lush. So they've got mm. it's a lot of green. It's open. It's an open space. So if you're standing in Central Park, which I think was on deck seven, you could look straight up, and you would see the pool decks above, but you would also see the sky. Oh. Um. So they had like 
So I was wrong. So just tell me I was wrong. Well, I don't know exactly. I think you're talking about the Royal Promenade, which was it looked oh, okay. like a mall. Um, they had like what, like fancy watches and some of the the signature dining, and they had bars and they had a quick service place in there too. But it was very chill and calm on that side. Um, and then underneath all of that, stretching from the front of the back to the ship, was the Royal Promenade, which had so the that promenade like the connected the two sides. It's underneath all of it, the Royal Promenade. Okay. So you have like. Imagine so like what's on top then thrill Island, like the water parks are at the very top of the ship. And then open to that is the loud halves. And then there's like an elevator bank separating the two. Okay. And then underneath all of that, it was the Royal promenade, which was like the atrium. That's the one that had the pearl in it. Um, but it has like a karaoke bar, a dueling piano bar, the pizza place, the main gift shop, guest services, like all the think of the, the atrium. It was yeah. just like the atrium, but all long. these things off of it. Yeah. But um, but that's where you spend most of your time. And so there's there's a ton of things to do, like between all of the different bars there, the water parks, they've got karaoke, they have game shows, they have they had a scavenger hunt going on like they have programming. But it was also kind of weird because they were off times like if you had early dining like we did and you didn't have a show that night, there would be dead zones where there really wasn't much going on. So that's not I mean. That was kind of the thing, the issue that we kind of had before on the other cruise. Yeah. There's just, if you don't get it timed up right, it it feels like it takes so much longer to get back on a schedule. Right. Of like going to go go to things. Yeah. So like if you, you miss a program or miss something, you're like, okay, well, now I got to wait. And then you're not timed up because you, you can, you're you going to go it. eat. You're going to, you know, right. tried something else and. It just keeps kind of pushing you until finally you're like, okay, now I'm able to do stuff. I'm able to go play these games. Exactly. So it's like it felt like everything was scheduled at the same time and then there was nothing scheduled for a long time and then there were more things. So we had five o'clock dining, which I actually didn't mind it because we kind of got we've been eating early at home anyway. So we kind of got it out of the way. But then from like seven to like nine or ten, there wasn't much to do, especially if you didn't have a show. And then things would pick up around like ten. So they have a couple of fun things on the ship. So they did a sail away parade, which was really like they had a whole parade in the Royal Promenade. Like they promenaded down the this this atrium, which was really fun. We missed the first one because it was like at our dinner time. So the next one was at like 1030. So we go to 5 p.m. dinner and then we're like, OK, we just got to stay up till 1030 now. <laughs> and we're sleepy. And so that was one of the things there was another thing that they did in the royal promenade called the one hit wonder show so they play a bunch of one hit wonders they have like the cruise director come out and all like all of the entertainment staff and they're doing like choreographed dances to all these one hit <laughs> wonders they've got props everything like, they did an amazing job but that didn't start till 11 30 at night i mean they're they're ready to party and rightly so it was not kid friendly at all but so like some of the programming they have to do later because it's after oh. bedtime but there was definite times where I was like, we would, Cheryl and I would just go back to the room and we'd be like, you want to read your book for like an hour and then we'll go back out. And we're like, yeah, okay. <laughs> what I, I, but I think the thing is, is like having such a long, like a, a longer period on a cruise. I think that's what it's, you're intended to do, right? Is you have this downtime to just quote unquote, relax, relax, weird concept. Um, I ended up working a couple of days. <laughs> on the cruise ship because we had it was a seven night sailing we had you know the, the first day is kind of a throwaway day right because you get on kind of late and the last day you leave so early we had three days at sea and so two of the days fell during the week and i was like well i'm just gonna work on those days anyway because i don't want to i don't want to sit in a pool um but there was it was more time to really go explore and i think that's what i really liked about doing a longer cruise especially on a ship that was so big is because we were still exploring on that last night. And I was like, did you know you could sit outside right here? And so we went and we like sat outside for a little bit in this little nook that I would have never seen had I not been out hanging out with some of the friends that I had on the yeah. ship the night before. Um, so it, it, it gives you a chance to explore a little bit, slow down a little bit. Um, but yeah, it was, I really loved the cruise. I was shocked. That I went from like our first cruise where I was like, mm, I don't know if this is for me to being like, man, this was 
I would love to go back and and have you guys with me. Yeah. So I mean, right now you're kind of talking about the the pools and being able to sit and relax as far as like you know throughout the ship, but you kind of mentioned it earlier. And uh, there's a lot of shops, and I know they you know the other cruise ships that that we've been on it has just like basically gift shops is there more shopping or is it kind of the same thing go oh, there was like a jewelry store yeah so and i think a painting store maybe i don't really remember but it, yeah. it didn't feel like there was too much shopping but the fact that it's so big like i would assume there's something out like i wanted to clothes sh- and yeah stuff. i wanted to shop more i know I guess maybe I'm spoiled for the theme parks where I can just like go find like 20 different types of sweatshirts. Mm. But they had a really small shop that was mostly like icon of the seas stuff. And then they had another shop that was smaller and more boutique. And it had like the, the vineyard vines and like kind of the collaboration brands. And that was it in terms of like Royal Caribbean shopping. And then they had the luxury shopping. So like bags, watches, jewelry. I was like, no thanks i'm not even gonna go in there and pretend oh they had a makeup store i did go in there um but i was like i'm not gonna waste your time <laughs> i'll stay outside please oh they, they the, did have the a liquor store they had the a middle. liquor store but you if you bought the liquor they held it until the last night of the cruise and then they would deliver it to your room because that they, makes sense yeah so um but yeah the shopping was fine I don't know that you're like unless you're doing like the nice the, the, shopping. The, it's not meant for. I know that was one of the the things that you had mentioned that you had wanted to get was a spirit jersey, and it's again it. it I, I'm just comparing it to our last cruise. Yeah, and it's it was that I imagine all over again. Yeah, that if you don't get it as soon as you you're not waiting there to for them to open it, you're not getting it. You're not getting which it. is so it's so bizarre like you're there for seven days like yeah slow down a little bit slow down we saw like a mob of people outside of the store when because you can't the the stores can't sell while you're at port you have to be on international waters for i don't know why i'm not gonna pretend to know why and tell you a lie um but we've pulled away and there's just a mob of people waiting to go into this teeny teeny tiny gift shop and they bought up all the spirit jerseys within like within an hour because we came back like an hour or two later and they were all gone i was like i was not no not for me man so in that situation i'm gonna keep i'm gonna keep you up for the next topic okay i would want to drink you talked about (laughs) you talked about the the drink packages yeah i think this is the thing that i heard the most about when we were talking you're like, oh, I tried this drink. <laughs> I tried this drink. It's really good. It was, uh, you know, afterwards, you're like, yeah, I really put it to the test. I so did. L- l- please explain. Let's discuss. Drink package, 10 out of 10. <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, so you can get a drink package. And you could get a drink at breakfast. You could get mimosas at 530 in the morning. So did wanted. they set a limit? Yeah, I don't know. So I tried. <laughs> I have heard, I heard on this cruise that other cruise lines have imposed limits on how many alcoholic beverages you can pr- purchase per day or order under your drink package a day. Um, and it's something crazy like 15 or 18. Seems like a lot, right? Yeah. Like I heard well, this before we started drinking and then I drank a lot the first night. <laughs> because... You just go order a drink. Like, you don't have, you already paid for it. So, like, in your mind, you're like, it's free drinks, right? Like, you already yeah, prepaid so. for it. So, you're just like going ham. And so, I'm like, well, let me try this drink. Let me try that drink. They were like, would you like a digestive after your meal and between your dessert? I'm like, absolutely, I would. <laughs> Who am I? I don't know. But I've had two glasses of wine. I would also like this digestive. And they're like, would you like a cocktail to go? I'm like, of course I would. Like, who am I drinking all these? And then you go to like the dueling piano bar. We ended up meeting up with friends that were on board the ship. Let's have drinks there. Let's go to the nightclub. Let's have drinks there. The first night of the cruise, 
I did not drink again until like I think after dinner and I had like one drink and I'm like, that's all I can stomach. I'm, I'm good. <laughs> no, they, 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 they know that happens. So they're like, OK, go ahead. Go wild on the first day. Yeah, you, you, you do you. You'll, you'll, you'll learn, though. But it was the drink package was fun just because you're not going anywhere. You're not driving like you just have to make it to your room. That's all you got to do. And then oh, and there's being, some pretty funny videos of people barely making it to their room <laughs> not that you sent but i've seen online well and the hard part is it's like we were up on a very high deck and i'll let me i'll talk about the cabin right after this we we're up on a very high deck this the cruise ship technically has i think like 16 decks but then when you walk all the way up to the water slides it's like 20 decks or something um we were on deck 14 when you're up that high on a cruise ship and when you're too far forward or too far back you're going to feel that movement on the cruise ship there was one day where it was really, really rough days at sea. Like they had to cancel the ice skating show. Like it was really, really bad. And we're walking. We were so, uh, we were mostly sober and we were walking. <laughs> Maybe we, the ship wasn't rocking <laughs> and it was just you. <laughs> no, it was really bad. It was probably okay. It was, <laughs> no, the, the ship was rocking. We we're trying to walk it down the hallway and it's like bouncing us like off the walls. Like it was moving that bad. I, I, I feel that, you know, that's probably, that, that probably was the drinks. It was the drink package was a 10 out of 10. <laughs> <laughs> but that said, so yes, drink package. Amazing. Highly recommend if you go on a cruise that does have a drink package, wait for that sale, get that drink <laughs> package. Um, our cabin. So our cabin was a balcony cabin. Fantastic. Wonderful. Let's look out at the ocean. Except on Royal Caribbean, because of the way that the ship was organized, where it has the the more chill side and then the thrill side, like a quiet side and a loud side, because of the way that's open in the middle all the way up, Royal Caribbean is able to sell more balcony rooms because it's all open space in between in those sections so it's a balcony but it's overlooking it's an inside balcony it's an inside balcony um doesn't sound bad um, let me let me sell you on it and then let me sell you against it ours was overlooking surfside the family section i could look down i could see the carousel i could see the splash pad i could see the ice cream stand right there i could see all these wonderful things it's bright it's colorful it's cute it's loud yeah. <laughs> they're playing music all hours of the day they're having like family like let me teach you how to play the steel drums and you're gonna learn how to play baby shark i listened to baby shark on the steel drums so many times <laughs> <laughs> over that week if you've got kids and you're okay with the noise that's fine and i'm fine with the noise but i also didn't have my kids and i was like oh quiet would have been kind of nice <laughs> But the other problem is because it's open like this and basically it's like a U where all of these balconies are, I'm looking straight into somebody else's balcony, right in front of me, straight into somebody yeah. else's balcony. And because I'm on deck 14, I'm way up, the next step up, deck 15, is what they call the wind jammer. It's the buffet. I open my curtains in the morning. I'm watching people eating their scrambled eggs. They're watching me in my PJs. So like I could never, we could never have the curtains open. Yeah, that kind of because sucks. Because there was no privacy. That was the part to me that I was like, that's not a deal. Like, it's cool that you could look out over Surfside. So maybe if like mom's taking a break in the room and dad's down with the kids, like you can still kind of like sit down on the balcony and keep tabs. But I love sun. I love sunlight. I love privacy. <laughs> and I couldn't do those things with the room that we were in. So I think knowing the ship and knowing where things are in the ship is like, key because yeah. the rooms that we were in were like highly coveted rooms being on the surf side inside like that but i that's not something i would have you would choose i would book again no i would i would want the ocean i would want to be able to just like have natural sunlight in there because we couldn't do it because like i said there's people eating in the buffet at all hours of the day so they could just like watch us in the cabin it was like oh yeah mm, that's not ideal <laughs> But the, but the cabins were very spacious. They were very beautiful um, for a cruise ship. Like, I was surprised with how much room we had in that cabin. Like, I did not feel crammed sharing it with somebody that I don't normally share a room with at all. Like, it was great. The storage. And they still do, like, a 
uh, like clean up every day type of thing. Or? Yeah. So they did housekeeping. They moved. I think after COVID, they moved to like once a day housekeeping instead of twice a day. Um, but our room attendant was fantastic. Like the service. That's the last thing I think we'll, we'll touch on. But the service was incredible on the ship. I was blown away. I don't know if it was because it's a brand new cruise ship. I did learn that everybody that was staffed on this cruise ship, this is not their first ship. Okay. They took veterans from other ships that are really good at what they did to put them on this one because it is the world's largest cruise ship. There's so much around it. Like they needed people that knew what they were doing. Yeah. Um, but everybody was just so excited, so kind. Like it was like Disney level service. Like I was truly shocked because I went from that as soon as I got off the cruise ship, I the first person in customer service that I met after this, I was like, I am not on a Royal Caribbean ship anymore. But truly everybody there, they were just they're so happy to be there. They're so happy to help you. They just want you to have a fantastic vacation. And just like you can tell they genuinely mean it. They're not just putting on a show. That's good. I was that was probably the biggest reason that I th- uh, that will our family will go on a Royal Caribbean ship because the service, it was just, it was top notch. Yeah. I I mean, that was one of the things, you know, the first thing I I was like, so how was it? You know, that's the first thing I always kind of key up with. And you kind of like sat there and contemplated it for a little bit. And you're like, I really liked it. You know, it was, there was kid, it was kid friendly enough that you feel the kids are going to have a good time. But then the, I think the big thing that caught me or caught my attention when you said it was it was adult friendly and not in the sense that it's, you know, PG adult, but you got to have like adult fun with the club and they've got a and nightclub, the, the, like the, 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 the piano bar and and the game shows and stuff. It, it was very like geared towards adult as well, not just one or the other. Right. Like so. it, it's not a. It's not a family friendly ship like other cruise lines. It was something for every type of traveler would have a good time yeah. on a ship like this or just on Royal Caribbean in general. Like it was like I said, I had a lot of hesitations going into this cruise. It's a seven night sailing. It's a big ship. That means there's a lot of people. I, I didn't have you guys with me, which like that's not a normal thing, but I had a lot of hesitations going into it. And then I'm like, oh, and it's a cruise. I don't know <laughs> necessarily that I'm like a huge fan of cruising. I think this one sold me like it was. Yeah, I was like I said, I I had my doubts. Yeah. After a week there when I was having to pack up all my stuff, I'm like, oh, but this was nice. And I liked <laughs> this and I really liked the way they did that. And I wish I could go have another one of these and just go eat my lunch and then go get myself a little soft serve ice cream. Like I was, I was bummed to leave, which well, that, I mean, I think that's just a sign of that. It was a good trip. Yeah. It was a good trip. It's a good vacation. So yeah, I, I loved it. I would love to go back. I would love, I would love for you to so, go with me. <laughs> <laughs> no, I, I, I think it's going to be something that we do. We try out um, just because getting to experience some of these things in the different ways that that's the part that I uh, have really started to like open up about. Um, now the part that may get me is it'll just be like more or not like it, it'll be more of a thing of me getting used to is it's going to be just kind of us, the, the small group. Yeah. And a lot of our travels lately have been a little bit larger groups and I've, kind of gotten accustomed to that because i kind of feel like okay i have my my security blanket of my my posse with me yeah and so when you kind of go alone it becomes a a little bit of a scary thing uh so but i but but i say that and because like this year i've kind of put myself to say you know what i'm gonna start doing more stuff on my own uh just to kind of get out of my shell and I think that's why I'm more like open to say, you know what, let's go ahead and try something like that. Yeah. No, I, that was, I think a big difference too, is our, our cruise that we went on was just the four of us. And then we were like, you know what we should do? We should plan a cruise with 200 of our closest friends. (laughs) (laughs) 
And that's what we're doing on the March 1st cruise that we're going on. This one was a little bit of a mix of that because like one, I didn't have you guys, but I did have my sister-in-law. And then I also had a few friends on the ship and I made some friends too. So it was kind of like a nice blend. Yeah. But yeah, I think if we want to maybe just put out an invitation if anybody wants to go on <laughs> on the cruise with us. But we're, Icon of the Seas is booked out for like over a year, a year wow. and a half maybe. I mean, like it is popular and Royal Caribbean pumps out new ships all the time. So there are new ships coming and there is, I've been checking, there is so availability. How, how long is the Icon going to be the largest ship in the world? That I don't know. There is another one that's in the same class as the Icon, I think, that's going to be coming out, I want to say, later next year. I think 2025, um, which will uh, – it's just one of those things where I think they just like – Make it just a, a little, little bit, bit taller. bigger. Like Tower of Terror, they added like a foot on top of it or whatever. Like I think it's one a of those – A bigger antenna. Yeah, I think it's one of those things where it's just like a little bit larger. But like I said, Royal Caribbean, Icon of the Seas, like – what an incredible ship. So much for everybody on that ship. It has sold me on cruising. I was a little uncertain, like two, three days in, but by the end of it, completely sold. That's pretty cool. Yeah. So we already mentioned we do have, I think that's enough for, for this episode, but we already mentioned we have the March 1st Wish Cruise coming up, yeah. which is very exciting. That's the next thing on our docket. We did just finish a Mosh Isley, which we'll be recapping, I'm sure. Sometime. Either on our channel or Thank somewhere. the Maker. Somewhere. Well, yeah, stay, what are we talking stay about? Stay tuned. Somewhere in the network we'll be talking about it. But the other thing we wanted to shout out is we we are fresh off of Mosh. We are what? At the time of this recording, like 48 hours post Mosh. Yeah. Um, and we met some of our patrons. Yeah. At Mosh. Like, well, we knew them. Yeah. We didn't meet them. They were there. Well, it, oh, no, this is. <laughs> you it, were there. It, yeah. The, that, that's the crazy thing is, you know, we've, well, we've met some of them before. Yeah. We've met Kat before. Uh, but I think even Logan. We've met Logan. So it was like, it was, but, it, you know, again, it's just like, it feels new. Yeah, you know, feels new and and to get excited for it because we're at a new place. Uh, but yes, you know we we wanted to sh give a shout out to our patrons that we were able to see. There's one that we didn't. One that we didn't. But Logan, Cat, and Mark, and Justin and Naomi, which we see them all the time. Yeah, we see them. <laughs> we see them a lot. But uh, we want to thank those patrons and then Allison, uh, Eddie. Eddie. Yes. We saw you. We saw that you were there. Yeah. I saw you there. You didn't there, but say hello. We didn't get a picture together. Ugh. But thank you so much for coming out, for supporting Mosh, for supporting us on Patreon. We have a lot more planned over on our Patreon. So if you do want to join us there, it is five bucks a month. Um, we've been having a ton of fun with it. Yeah. We're about to open up our Discord very, very soon. Yeah. We're trying to figure that out. We don't know. Yeah, we're, we're probably going to talk to our patrons anyway. Like we're going to say, hey, what do we... What Doing. Yeah. What are we doing here? But that is it. Thank you so much for hanging out, and we will see you next time. <laughs>